Next, I want to read to you one of my favorite stories that my mother used to read me when I was a kid. And I wonder, just maybe, St. Nicholas's mom read this to him too. It's called The Unexpected Guest. Another guest, another room. It was like any other day, except much more crowded. I had never seen so many people come to our inn. I'd barely show one person their room when there'd be a knock on the door from another. Our inn was full of people returning from foreign lands, merchants and stonemasons, scribes, tax collectors, architects, women and children, some I hadn't seen in years, some I'd never seen. The senses drew them from all over. Overseeing the washing and the cooking and the cleaning was my lot for that day. One crisis after another. That was my lot every day, really. I was okay with it, mostly. It was just the way things were. It was the life of an innkeeper's wife, and I didn't mind it. Most days. Sure, as a child, I had dreams of bigger things, but who doesn't? Like everyone else, I had those normal childhood dreams of crazy impossible things. In my dreams, I would marry a ruler and host princes and princesses and kings and queens from all over the world. My palace would have all the finest dishes and the most comfortable beds that anyone in all of history had ever had. It would be a home away from royalty, home away from home for royalty from all over the land. My palace would be famous and everyone would want to come. But I wasn't stupid. I knew that women like me don't marry rulers and certainly don't live in palaces. The only people around here were nothing but ordinary. I had the mud and dung all over my floors to prove it. I wasn't complaining though. The kids were fed and we had a roof over our heads. It was more than I could say for most people that night. In fact, in a funny sort of way, my childhood dreams kind of came true that day. Everyone from around the world did want to come. In fact, by dinner time, we were turning them away in crowds. Each family had their stories of how far they had traveled, how tired they were, and how much they really needed a place. At first, I felt sorry for them and would try to squeeze them in. But after a while, a weariness deeper than my bones set in, and I just didn't care anymore. You should have gotten here sooner, I wanted to say. I'm only one person. What do you want me to do? It was all I could do to keep up with the ones I already had there. What with the dinners and the beds to be made, the dishes to be scrubbed. Never mind have the energy to deal with all the ones that arrive at my doorstep with the complaints and their stories. So when that knock came at the door, I almost didn't answer it. What was the point? I was just going to have to say another weary sorry that I wasn't even sure was true anymore. I was on my way to the kitchen to check on the soup and was going to ignore the knock, pretend I didn't even hear it. But something in me, maybe it was curiosity, or maybe it was just out of habit, did a half turn and walk to the door and opened it. I was about to tell them, sorry we're full, when I stopped. There was a calmness about the couple that was startling and seemed out of place with the rush of people in the streets behind them and the rush inside the inn. Particularly her. I couldn't stop looking at her. Her face was red and the crest of her hair was coated with sweat and dust and the low placement of a bulge underneath her cloak was unmistakable. But her spirit was so quiet, so calm. There was such a peace in her eyes. I had never seen a girl so close to giving birth so at peace. 
especially not one that was clearly having her first. I could tell by the smoothness of her skin. She couldn't have been older than 12, 13 maybe. Everything in me wanted to do something, but what? I knew I could turn them away and they wouldn't even protest, wouldn't even begin to give me a hard time. But I could tell by how low her stomach sat and the shortness of her breath that she was due to bear a child, and very soon. We stood there for a moment, just looking at each other. Then suddenly, I had an idea. I glanced behind me to make sure no one was looking and led them discreetly around the crowded and dusty courtyard. The stable wasn't much, but at least it was out of the way of wind and the darkness of the night and the crowds of people. And she could at least have her baby in moderate peace. I settled them in as best I could, all the while aware of the soup in the kitchen and the people back at the inn needing drink. I hurried back towards the inn, hoping no one would see or miss me. I was almost to the kitchen door when I glanced back to them and over towards the hills and the stars in the sky. And I saw a flash of light. It was so quick, I thought maybe I had imagined it. I looked around me to see if anyone else in the courtyard saw it. But the conversations continued in that open state. For a moment, I thought that the lights had had shape, almost like wings. No, it couldn't have been, I thought. I must be overtired. I shook my head and hurried back into the inn. The rest of the night was pretty uneventful. Well, as uneventful as an inn stuck with over-hungry and over-tired travels can be. I ventured out to the stable once with fresh water for her, but could hear the groans and decide to leave it by the door so as not to disturb them. Very late into the night, as the stars were disappearing into the daylight, I slumped into my bed and looked outside one last time. No. It couldn't. A few hours later, I awoke and went out to check on them. But they had gone, leaving nothing behind. Part of me thought the air smelled different, though. Not so much like a stable anymore. More like incense? No, I'm definitely overtired, I thought. It's just my childhood dream seeping into my reality. My mom used to always tell me, the mind is wondrous things when it's tired. Then the next day, I heard the rumors. I was out at the market when I overheard some of the merchants talking. Some shepherds were claiming they had been to our inn and visited a newborn boy in the stable. That wasn't major news, except I don't remember seeing any shepherds. I was glad, though, that she'd had her baby and all was well. Then... I heard that the shepherds were claiming the boy was the Messiah. The Messiah? It couldn't be. The couple was dressed so ordinary, I thought. I knew what the rabbis and the prophets said. The Messiah was to be born from the line of David for royalty. Now, they weren't in rags, mind you, but nothing like the robes and jewels I'd heard that kings and queens wore. For days, weeks, and months later, I smiled at the thought in my heart. I molded over my heart, sometimes believing it, most of the time not. The Messiah at my inn, in my stable? Could it be? Could it be that a king had really visited me? But our place was so ordinary, so full of mud and dung, just an inn. I never really knew for sure. I never really knew if I had seen the light of angels in the distance, if that couple really was something special, if the smell in the barn was the smell of royalty. But from that day on, something inside of me was different. I served soup with a fuller smile and made the beds with a bit of extra care. It was an inn, not a palace, yes. But maybe, just maybe, a king 
had visited me there.